What is up, everyone? Welcome to another record. This is the series where we discuss, break down, and recap yesterday's baseball. We're going to be discussing Paul Skeens' historical and incredible outing once again. We're going to be talking about the Giants and the Cubs game, a wild back-and-forth game that was super enjoyable to watch. A big matchup between these two teams fighting for the NL wild card spot. We have my all-star ballot. I'm going to be giving my all-star ballot for the 2024 season. Super excited to do that. And then we will have the weekly pick em at the end of the show. So I'm super excited. I want to get straight into it talking about Paul Skeen's incredible outing. Let's break it down. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Skeen's of the Pittsburgh Pirates has gone off to a great start to his career, to say the least. Yesterday, he pitched versus Cincinnati Reds. Six innings, six hits, one run, and seven strikeouts. A quote-unquote rough outing. There was a good amount of base runners, some good at-bats, as we'll see later on in this breakdown uh, versus for the Cincinnati Reds. But a great outing. I want to break it down. Paul Skeens is one of the best pitchers, I think, in baseball right now. And I think uh, we really have to appreciate how good he is. Um, and, and I know like, it's just, it's just remarkable to see how much command he has and how good his stuff is. So starts off Tyler Stevenson right here. We're in the second inning. The Reds already got a run on the Spencer Steer, uh, double. That was a really impressive at bat, but, um, starts him off with these dirty splitters. <laughs> I mean, the, the, his splitter, his splinker, it, it's, it's, it's a remarkable pitch, man. There's really no pitch like his splinker. He's throwing it upwards of 96 miles an hour at times. It's really it, it's Johan Duran, his splinker. It's pretty much Paul Skeens in a starter. Um, and uh, starts him off 0-2. He tries to go here back to a fastball. Misses away. And here we're going to see an overlay of his fastball and his splitter in this game to TJ Friedel. And this is one of the best overlays that I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at this overlay right here. So it's going to pause right here. Or we're going to pause it right here. And this is back-to-back -back pitches. I mean, that is a fastball and a splitter that's 100 dotted, and that is a splitter that is down there. And that's why TJ Friedel is taking that pitch. It's, it's, it's really uh, crazy because as a hitter, at, at least my mindset, and a lot of hitters that I've heard talk, like, you have to be reactionary as a hitter. You can't be thinking, you can't be sitting too many pitches, though. Guys uh, tend to, especially at the major league level, because pitching is so good, like Paul Skeens, Sometimes you have to sit on a pitch, potentially a, a slider if a guy throws it a lot, a cutter. But for the most part, you're looking for fastball and you're adjusting to the splitter, to the slider, um, to the cutter, any other pitch that you could see. But against Paul Skeens, because look how late this movement. I mean, this is practically at TJ Friedel right here. And he's got to make a decision right here, whether it's a splitter or a fastball at 100 miles an hour. Like, how do you do that? That is impossible, man. This, this, this guy is unreal. He's off the charts. And then he's got that sweeper that um, is actually registered as a curveball. But um, I, I would consider that a sweeper. But falls behind 3-2. That, those were some two tough pitches, especially when you got two, first two strikes on that splitter, low and inside. Uh, he went fastball and then went two sweepers in a row. Got to just go to that splitter. Got to go to that fastball in the zone. Um, he, he doesn't get that in the zone, but, I mean, that's such a dirty pitch. <laughs> that is such a dirty pitch. Tyler Stevenson strikes out. Um, here we have uh, another at-bat right after that at-bat versus Jonathan India. And this at-bat was maybe the best at-bat of the entire game for Paul Skeens. Uh, starts him off away with the sweeper. Good save from India. I think they zoomed in on the broadcast on India. And you could see him. Uh, after this, right before this, right here, uh, they zoomed in on his face, and he looked very intense. Now, a lot of hitters, if you zoom in on any hitter's face before you see a pitch, they're going to be an intense vibe. But sometimes, at least for me, I know when I'm hitting, I sometimes, like, you could tell in my face that I'm going to swing. I'm going to be aggressive on this pitch. But 1-0, India's aggressive here. He just took a sweeper. He's probably going to go fastball or splitter in the zone. Um, and, and you could tell India is aggressive here, 1-0, and, um, and, and, and he gets that. That's maybe the best pitch that Paul Skeens threw all night. What a pitch right here, man. It's really unbelievable, uh, how, how good and how, like, how, how defenseless as a hitter you can be. Really, like, there's nothing that you can do, man. You, you could be, like, India could have read that pitch perfectly, but, I mean, literally after he swings, he's like, oh, that pitch, like you have to, it's a complete guessing game with Paul Skeens. Complete guessing game because if he's locating his pitches like he always is, 
because he has a 92 percentile, um, 92 percent walk rate. Wait, okay, I said that wrong. He's in the 92 percentile uh, with his walk rate, which means he's the, he's in the top of the top. Uh, he's not walking guys. I think it's four or five percent of the time that he's walking guys so far in his major league career. It, we've never seen anything like him. So here's that back against Jake Fraley. Jake Fraley, man, this is the at-bat of the week. The BB beautiful at-bat of the week right here. Uh, Jake Fraley, man, shout out to him, bro. Starts him off sweeper low, and he goes a hundo down the middle. Um, I think Paul Skeens is around 87 pitches right here, two away. This could be uh, his last hitter right here. He wants to mow down, get Jake Fraley out here. But um, fastball, middle, middle, Jake Fraley fouls it off. Still impressive that he's able to foul it off, but um, a pitch that he wants to do damage on. Uh, left middle, middle, and then he gets a sweeper uh, over the middle of the plate. So he just saw 100, then he sees 83 sweeper, um, and he gets the barrel to it, is just out in front of it, hits it well, falls behind 1-2 here. Skeens is going to go back to that fastball. He's trying to locate that upstairs. If he does locate it upstairs, I think he might get Fraley, but he misses away 2-2 two, two right here. Where is he going to go? He's going to go back to that fastball low, and Fraley once again is able to foul it off. So after I see Jake Fraley foul off two fastballs in this at-bat, I am going splitter, 100%. Because if you're able to foul off that fastball, hey, shout out to you, you're not going to be able to get my splitter. You're going to think it's a fastball, and then you're going to swing over it, and I'm going to strike you out and get hype um, and, and leave this leave this outing. But he does go with that splitter, 96 miles an hour. Um, I didn't think it was a splitter, but it, it was a splitter, and it did look like it had the movement of a splitter, but he's not able to locate it. Um, outside so three and two right here we've seen the arsenal in this at bat where is paul Skeens gonna go he's gonna go back to that splitter and i mean what how did how did jake Fraley take that that is a perfectly located and executed splitter low he's able to he, he's fouled off that fastball twice he had to have been sitting splitter because there's no way he takes that that is such a good pitch right there three two but jake Fraley with the best at bat that i've ever seen versus paul Skeens. And he's able to take it. So now, first and second, two away. Since he down three, Tyler Stevenson up here. Big spot right here. I mean, he's at what? I think he's at 91 pitches now. Uh, this this is it. This is it right here. Get, get it out. I mean, you've been pitching so great all game. Um, but uh, he's able to, um, uh, Stevenson's able to take some pitches 2-0 here. Uh, falls behind the command a little bit off. You could see uh, he missed uh, like three spots. I, I mean, two, two. He missed that fastball away, that splitter away with uh, Jake Fraley. Now you fall behind against Stevenson. He goes with that splitter in the zone. And Stevenson, we saw in his first at bat, really, I, I don't think Stevenson can, Stevenson can do anything right here. It really, like, I mean, another pitch right there, another splitter, 95 miles an hour. These are defense hacks right here. Stevenson is not reading schemes at all. He cannot recognize his pitches. He's just seeing ball and just trying to somehow put the bat of the ball and, and hopefully something good will happen. Um, so 2-2 two, two right here. Skeens is going to go fastball 100 away. He's going to call off Yaz and make a phenomenal play as a pitcher to end his outing. If that ball, um, if that throw, first of all, is not accurate, I mean, everything just gets, it gets fucked up. But perfect throw, perfect athletic play. Uh, really big, 96 pitches, ends his outing, Paul Skeens, uh, what, a, what a performance, love him so much, appreciate Paul Skeens, man, he really is one of a kind, and I just, uh, hoping he can stay healthy, have a long, successful career, because he really has the chance to be one of the best pitchers that we have the chance to watch, so shout out to Paul Skeens. Shout out to Paul Skeens, and this led the Pittsburgh Pirates to a 4-1 to one win yesterday. They move up to 35 and 37, and the Reds drop to 34 and 38. And going into this game, both of these teams were tied, and two teams fighting for the NL Wild Card in the NL Central Division. So a big, I think it's a three-game set. It actually might be a four-game set. I'm not actually 100% sure. But regardless, whoever wins this series uh, could gain some substantial ground going forward. So the Pirates, a team that's played pretty good as of late, they're in that Wild Card hunt, and with Paul Skeens, Jared Jones, Mitch Keller at the top in their lineup with McCutcheon playing well, Brian Reynolds, Nick Gonzalez, O'Neill Cruz had a big day yesterday. Um, their, their team has been playing a lot better, and their bullpen with uh, Chapman, Holderman, and David Bednar has been pretty good as well. So Pirates have been really exciting, a great start from Paul Skeens. And in this game, Andrew McCutcheon, I noticed while watching his at-bats, he was very, very comfortable. He put up phenomenal very consistent at bats where he was driving the ball. He was seeing the ball really, really well. He was taking pitches. And when you gave him a pitch middle, middle, 
Uh, he was really attacking on it, and it's so impressive to see Andrew McCutcheon have such a great resurgence with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He is a real great leadoff hitter in the major leagues in 2024, and they actually just showed yesterday on the broadcast his first homer, I think back in 08 or 09 with the Pirates uh, in the Metrodome uh, versus the Minnesota Twins. Man, consistent, phenomenal career. He has over 300 homers, and he's been so great, and I love watching McCutcheon. One of the cooler swings in baseball. And yesterday, Ellie De La Cruz, another thing that I noticed while watching this game, he was really impressive versus Paul Skeens. He went three for four in this game. He had two hits versus Paul Skeens. And there was an at-bat where I think it was the first pitch, a splitter low and away, Ellie De La Cruz lefty, and he slaps it, and it barely just hits the foul line chalk, and it bounces out of play for a ground rule double. And really impressive. He's obviously an aggressive hitter. That was a very aggressive swing first pitch, but... Um, impressive, man. Ellie De La Cruz has really went through his ups and downs throughout his entire career so far. But when Ellie De La Cruz is on, he 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 really is such a such a special hitter. Great, great game for Paul uh, for Ellie De La Cruz. And again, impressive versus a very tough pitcher, uh, a very swing and miss heavy guy uh, to put up some impressive at bats for Ellie De La Cruz. So that game um, was a was a great game to watch. And then another game that I watched yesterday was the Giants and the Cubs game. I was watching this game simultaneously with the NBA final. Shout out to the Boston Celtics. Great, great championship for them. But um, this game was also incredible. You, this is a better game than the NBA finals. The Giants end up winning this game seven to six. We had like four lead changes from the sixth inning on. It was it was incredible. So this game started off actually as a pitching duel with Jordan Hicks and Javier Assad. Two of my favorite pitchers in baseball so far this season, and they both pitched really, really well. Javier Sot had seven strikeouts through five innings. Jordan Hicks had four strikeouts through five innings as well. Hicks allowed no runs. Assad only allowed one run. It was a really tough run um, against him. Was, I, I, Mike Yastrzemski put up a great at bat. But yeah, Javier Sot through the first two innings, he had three, or I think three, three strikeouts um, looking. It, it, through the first four batters, he had three strikeouts looking. Um, his sinker, um, hit the movement of a sinker. The umpire had a, had a bit of a bigger zone and he really, really took advantage of it. Every single two strike pitch, uh, to lefties, he's going sinker inside and then it just clips the inside corner, uh, to righties. He's going away with it. It's, it's really impressive. I love Javier Assad. He's one of the better pitchers in baseball and he's going to be featured in, uh, my all-star bout later on in this game. But Taking this game to the sixth inning, the Giants are up one to nothing on that Yas Mike Yastrzemski triple. And Michael Bush is going to take Randy Rodriguez yard. Um, impressive, man. Randy Rodriguez is a young pitcher. He's got phenomenal stuff. Fastball uh, slider combo. And he really, something I noticed while watching this and watching this game is, is Rodriguez is either throwing the ball way out of the zone or he's throwing middle middle at least in this at least in this appearance it was really really not great for Randy Rodriguez but a uh, Michael Bush man again he got great stuff 98 miles an hour middle middle with some sync to it and he's able to get the barrel under it and really drive it to left center field and opposite field a dead center homer in Wrigley Field at night very very impressive for Michael Bush uh gives the Cubs a two to one lead so a go ahead two run shot for Michael Bush we take it to the seventh inning and the San Francisco Giants are going to have a big inning here. Heliot Ramos is going to take it. I think this is off. Actually, I don't even. I think this might this might be off of uh, Hayden Wisniewski or Mark. I think it's off of Hayden Wisniewski. Um, he takes a fastball. Yeah, it is off Hayden Wisniewski. Um, impressive, man. Heliot Ramos for the San Francisco Giants so far. He has a 981 OPS. Can anyone believe how good Heliot Ramos has been this year? Uh, real revelation so far. Center fielder. I think he's only 25 years old. He was a first round pick back in 2017 and his swing is totally locked in and him stepping up for the Giants as their real two hitter is so impressive. He's very fun to watch and he's just a great hitter right now. He's really locked in impressive. So this ties up the game at two to two and then Hayden Wisniewski is going to load the bases following that with three walks. Um, so that's going to bring in Mark Leiter Jr. There's one away. He's going to strike out Mike Yastrzemski on a nasty splitter. Mark Leiter Jr. goes through his ups and downs as a reliever this year so far, but his splitter when it is locked in and he's throwing it low, it's a really great splitter. It really wasn't even close, way in the dirt. Um, and yet Mike Yastrzemski uh, swings over it. Uh, so that's going to be strike out. Um, that's going to be out number two in this inning. And then the uh, next batter is going to be Trenton Brooks. Trenton Brooks, I think in the sixth inning, 
he had a terrible at bat. He started off with a pitch clock violation, and then he swung through really terrible pitches. So Trenton Brooks, bases loaded, two away, tie ball game. Wrigley Field is going wild. It's it's just an electric atmosphere. And Trenton Brooks is going to, I think, fall behind one, two. He's going to take two really great, I think it was a splitter, and then a slider low. And you're like, Trenton Brooks, okay, you're calm. You're seeing the pitch as well. And then three, two, Mark Leiter Jr. is going to make a phenomenal pitch. A slider perfectly located uh, inside and low. It's not too inside and low where he's going to take it like he did in the previous pitches, but it's still in the zone. And, and with two strikes, you have to protect right there. And he swings over a really big strikeout, which keeps this a three to two game. I don't think I mentioned it before, but Tyro Estrada um, was hit by a pitch by Hayden Wisniewski. That was a really big moment. I think that was when there was two away to give the Giants the lead. So three walks, a hit by pitch, a big strikeout of Trenton Brooks. A lot is happening right here in this game. Let's take it to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Chicago Cubs again down three to two. We're going to see a fly ball in the infield actually dropped by the San Francisco Giants, the ball in the sky. I know when it when it's nighttime, it's tough to see that ball. It's going to be an infield um, single. It's going to be a single for the Chicago Cubs, and that's really going to transpire and hurt the San Francisco Giants in a big, big way. Um, I think there's going to be two away. Cody Bellinger is going to work a walk, and then Say Suzuki is going to come through with a big, big, big single, um, and that's going to give the uh, Cubs – a tie ball game, a three to three game. And then with runners on second and third, Say Suzuki and Cody Bellinger, Ian Happ versus Eric Miller, who's been a stud so far. I love Eric Miller so far for the San Francisco Giants. Ian Happ is going to unload, man. This is a really good at bat, a tough at bat. Ian Happ was not getting many pitches to hit, but then I think with two strikes, it might've been two, two. Ian Happ gets a slider middle, middle, right into his happy zone. And he crushes one, unloads one. A really clutch homer for Ian Happ, a guy who has struggled for the most part of the season. But I think I, I just checked his stats. His stats looked a lot better than it did like uh, like three weeks ago. So I think Ian Happ's been playing good as of late. And this is a really big homer. Six to three Chicago Cubs. The Cubs come all the way. I mean, they were they were down 1-0. Then they come back with a big two run shot. Then they lose the lead. Now they're back ahead. Six three. Everything's looking cool, calm, collected for Chicago to win this game. Um, we take it to the eighth inning and Patrick Bailey off of, I think this is Mark Leiter Jr. I think he gets like, he gets a cutter up and inside and he crushes one off the scoreboard. This is still six to three. The Cubs are comfortably ahead. Uh, I, I'm, I'm watching it in the background. I'm still watching the NBA finals, but, uh, a, a cool homer, but like the Cubs still won this game. Uh, Patrick Bailey has been great so far this season. I think he has an over 800 OPS and we know what he does defensively. So great job by Patrick Bailey, six to four San Francisco Giants. Hector Neris is going to come in for the ninth inning and a really tough inning, man. I, I saw a comment on the YouTube, on a, on a YouTube video when I was watching the highlights of this game, rewatching some of it. Um, and, and, and so someone commented, dude, why do we put in Hector? Hector Neris is fucking terrible, dude. This was not his fault. Uh, in ninth inning, they're up two, two uh, six to four and he's trying to close it down. We get a catcher's interference against Jorge Soler. He goes to first base. A walk by Mike Yastrzemski, which, yeah, it's a walk. It's his fault. But, um, I mean, not the worst-case scenario. And then first pitch, Tyro Estrada is going to ambush him for a three-run shot. Cannot believe it. Also, this ball was very close. I, 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 I saw this ball in the air. I'm like, oh, my God, he just did it. And then you see the left fielder. I don't know who's in left field for uh, at this point because there was a lot of – I think it might have been – I, I don't know, because I know Mike Talkman got injured in this game. Hopefully, it's not a super serious injury. But the left fielder goes back on it, and then he can, like kind of like like is on the track, but like he looks like he might be able to make a play. But then it just, I think it's three rows back uh, in Wrigley Field, and 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 Tyro Estrada, clutch homer. He's hyped. He's running around the bases. Seven to six, San Francisco Giants lead, and they were able to hold it. Camilo Doval uh, closes it down for San Fran. What a win. What a game. This is baseball at its best. I love this so much. I love this series. Excited for tonight's game. We have Logan Webb and Justin Steele. And the San Francisco Giants, what's the record now? I think I said it in the beginning. They're 36 and 37. The Cubs dropped to 34 and 39. Really tough loss, but a really entertaining game. Love, love, love this game. Um, and, and this game was just, it's, it was just enjoyable to watch, really enjoyable to watch. Wrigley Field is just electric. They need to get back on track, Chicago. There are a lot of really struggled. Christopher Morrell 
is now hitting under 200. Mike Talkman just, again, got injured yesterday, an oblique injury running to first base. Uh, it's been really tough so far for Chicago. Not a lot of guys hitting very well um, in there. A lot of Dansby Swanson, and Nico Horner, both of those guys really need to step up. They're their one and two hitters going into this season, and both of them have not been the same. Nico Horner's been pretty solid, but Dansby Swanson's been terrible, really terrible so far. So um, let's move on to my all-star ballot. My all-star ballot for 2024. So the rules for this all-star ballot, this is not a regular all-star ballot. I just want to let you know, this is not a regular, who's the best player. I'm not picking the best player. This is my personal all-star ballot based on guys that I really like and have overachieved and guys that I just think play important roles for their team and have been very impressive and have been enjoyable for me to watch so far in this season. Shout out to Kenny, king of the fourth quarter. Uh, he does his Kenny for real all-star ballot with like underrated guys that he likes similar to what I'm doing right now. So excited to do this. Let's get straight into it. I'm doing the AL and the NL side for each and every single position, including pitchers and relief pitchers. Let's get straight into it. For my AL catcher in my all-star ballot, I'm going with Connor Wong. Connor Wong has been really great this season so far. I think he has an 850 OPS. Uh, he's batting fifth. He's batting third for, for Boston. And Boston, man, they have a lot of young guys that I really like. But Connor Wong stepping up. He's only 26 years old still. And over the past three, four seasons, I think since 2021 when he came up, I think it was 21 or 22, he really has not been the guy that the Boston Red Sox expected uh, coming back as a main piece in the Mookie Betts trade. But he has really stepped up. It's been really great to watch. Um, and, and he's been great so far for Boston. Great hit, great hitter. And also, I think he's a good defender behind the dish. For my NL side, for my catcher, I'm going with Tyler Stevenson. Tyler Stevenson, we saw him previously uh, get cooked by Paul Skeens. But Tyler Stevenson, as a whole, with all the injuries that the Reds have sustained, he's been pretty good, uh, a consistent guy. He's been a good hitter. He's a great defender behind the dish. He's been pretty good so far for the Cincinnati Reds. My AL first baseman, I'm going with John Singleton. Though his numbers Currently, I think he has a 650 OPS. Look, John Singleton's a dog. He's been really good this season so far with Jose Abreu getting DFA'd. Who would have, I mean, literally released. I don't even know if a team's going to pick him up at this point. But John Singleton, even though the Astros have really struggled, he's been, uh, at least for April and May, he was a big reason why they even got a couple wins. John Singleton was really in the middle of that lineup doing his thing, working walks, Getting that power swing, he's playing a, a solid first base. I love John Singleton, and he's my AL first baseman. My NL first baseman is going to be Lamont Wade Jr. Late night, Lamont Wade Jr. has had a lot of big hits so far for San Fran. He has, hit, I think, a 916 OPS. Lamont Wade Jr. has been like that for uh, a long time. He puts up great at-bats. He walks, and he's got great power. He's been a great player so far for San Fran. Him and Helia Ramos. When they're healthy, that's a really great one, too. And I really like Lamont Wade Jr. He's been great for a long time for San Fran. My second baseman in the AL is going to be Willie Castro, a guy who's really versatile. He can play second base, shortstop, center field, left field, third base. He's been everywhere this season. And as a whole, on Baseball Savant, though I, when I've actually watched uh, Willie Castro, I've seen some bad moments of him in the outfield. But uh, he has overall a very highly... Uh, rated outfielder and, and just overall as a defender I think he's a two outs above average and he's in the 93rd percentile I'm pretty sure for um as his overall defense goes so he's a very good defender he puts up solid at bats he works well he's a contact oriented hitter and he's been good so far for the Minnesota Twins uh playing everywhere for them my second baseman I, in the NL I have Nick Gonzalez Nick Gonzalez has not played a ton this season I think he only has 30 games under his belt but he is really talented Talk about a guy who is really going to continue to be a, a good player and a really big piece for the for the for the Pittsburgh Pirates, an everyday player. I think Nick Gonzalez can really step up and be that for Pittsburgh. He's got a, a again a really great swing, and and he's a good defender. I love everything about Nick Gonzalez. He's been really good so far. He was batting fourth. Um, he has been batting fourth for the the Pirates, and I really like him as a hitter uh, in that lineup. My AL shortstop is Paul DeYoung. Paul DeYoung's been great for Chicago. Shout out to my boys in Chicago. I'm not, I'm not a White Sox fan. This is a, this is a great vintage shirt, though. I'm not going to lie. But Paul Paul DeYoung, man, Paul DeYoung has been really good. Uh, impressive, man. Going over to Chicago, really trying to rejuvenate his career. And he's been a big part of them. He's, he's hitting actually pretty well. I don't know about his defense. I haven't watched a lot of White Sox baseball this season. But Paul DeYoung, his numbers have been great so far. And um, shout out to Paul DeYoung. My NL shortstop is going to be Mason Wynn. Talk about a guy I love watching. Mason Wynn, when he's intense in that game. I love Mason Wynn, aggressive hitter, 
Um, he's just a, he's just a fun guy to watch. You can really tell he's intense. He loves he loves competing, and I, that's what I really love about Mason Wynn. Man, he's a great defender. Uh, he's such a talented hitter, and he's been batting leadoff for the for the Cardinals. And he's been one of their better hitters this entire season. He's only I think twenty two years old. Mason Wynn is going to be a stud. My third baseman in the American League is going to be Josh Rojas on the Seattle Mariners. Shout out to my guy Josh Rojas, man. I just recently watched him put in a 14 pitch at bat, I think against Jamison Tyone. Um, and that's really one of the main main reasons why he plays good defense. Um, he he's put up pretty solid numbers this season, and the and the Mariners really don't have a lot of guys. Jorge Polanco being a horrendous second baseman. I mean, he is a third baseman, but he kind of moves over. He can play shortstop second base, but Josh Rojas and, and a team that doesn't have a lot of bats. Josh Rojas has been one of their better bats. So shout out to Josh Rojas, a pretty good player for the Seattle Mariners. My NL third baseman is Joey Ortiz. Y'all, Joey Ortiz has a chance to be in the real all-star game. He does, man. I think he has an 850 OPS. I love Joey Ortiz, man. When he is locked in and actually hitting the ball and not putting not swinging and missing, dude. Joey Ortiz has maybe the cleanest swing in baseball. I love, I love his outward hands and then dude when he's just if you pitch him outside dude like he he's done man you're you're done like Jory Ortiz I love 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 him um actually I take that comment back just because his hands are extended I don't really even remember seeing Joey Ortiz take a lot of pitches the other way he's more of a pull hitter I think but he's just got a great swing I love Joey Ortiz and he's also a great defender from from Milwaukee a great trade so far um, I think DL Hall. I haven't seen DL Hall since like April, so I don't. I don't think DL Hall has done much. But uh, Joey Ortiz, man, he's a stud. He's going to be for a while. Only twenty four years old, and I really like his uh, career trajectory so far with Milwaukee in the American League outfield. I have JJ Blade and Jaron Duran. I think those guys speak for themselves. Jaron Duran definitely does. He's one of the fastest and most athletic guys in all of baseball. No question. It's him, uh, Ellie De La Cruz, O'Neill Cruz. There's not many guys that are really like more athletic. It's it's unbelievable. Jared Duran, he the way he he just runs angry. He runs so angry, and I love it. Uh, JJ Blade though, he has an 800 OPS with Oakland. He's a dog. He's a real real dog. He plays great center field defense. Um, and he's a great hitter, man. Really great trade. I think they got him in the AJ Puck trade, and AJ Puck has really disappointed so far with uh, the Miami Marlins in the NL outfield. This is gonna rub people the wrong way. I know. I have Jazz Chisholm. Jr. on the Miami Marlins. Everyone is, is Jazz Chisholm Jr. is the most hated guy in baseball suddenly this season. It, it, it's unbelievable because two years ago, you take it back. It's honestly kind of similar to Chase Claypool of the NFL. I don't know why I'm relating it to the NFL and Chase Claypool, but everyone loved Chase Claypool for a while. He was a great number two wide receiver. And then he started talking a lot on Twitter, on TikTok. And now everyone hates him, hates him, hates him. Um, but Jazz Chisholm Jr., he's not a superstar. And, and that's what the MLB kind of wanted him to be. He's not a superstar, but he's still a very good player. I think quietly he has, I think, a 760, 770 OPS. I think he has like 13 homers. He's, as a whole, has been pretty good. He's been a pretty good hitter. He's a pretty good leadoff hitter, though he has a lot of swing and miss in his game. He's not a bad hitter at all. He's got power. Um, his average is not the best. He gets on base a lot. He's got, uh, again, really great power. He gets extra base hits. Uh, Jazz Sism Jr., is, is a very good hitter and a very good player. It's just that people make him out to be this superstar and this freaking freaking nature, this fun guy. And um, he's just not that guy. And I think he's, again, been really good this season. His outfield defense um, is, is something that people critique him a lot on. But his, his outfield defense, I, I don't think he's incredible in center field. He makes some tough plays sometimes. But as a whole, I wouldn't consider him a terrible outfielder. Again, though I'm not watching a ton of Miami Marlins baseball, to be honest with you, but Jazz Sidham Jr., I think he's been good this season, and his numbers as a whole have been pretty good. So uh, he's making my 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 all-star ballot here. Uh, my my second NL outfielder is going to be Harrison Bader. And this one's kind of a weird one because Mets fans are going to be like, dude, Harrison Bader sucks, man. He freaking is terrible. No, Harrison Bader, he's not the best player. I, I, he, this is my all-star ballot. But Harrison Bader, when I've watched him, I've seen him at least get five clutch hits, like really clutch hits, where he's hyped, like, oh my God, I just won us the game. I just won us the game. He plays great center field defense. He's not a stud. He's not this great player. But if Harrison Bader is batting ninth in your lineup and playing the defense and hitting the way he is in clutch situations, 
He's a very good player to have on your team, and he's been pretty good so far for the Mets. I think he's a 740 OPS. His OPS has uh, uh, been been slowly rising, I think, since um, in the middle of May when it really was, I think, like under 650. It was it was not that good for uh, Harrison Bader. So my starting pitchers in the American League, I have Renel Blanco, I have Reese Olsen, I have John Gray. All three of those guys have been really, really good this season. Renel Blanco is kind of a controversial one because of this foreign substance. But, man, he has the no-hitter. He almost threw a no-hitter. He went seven no-hit innings. Renel Blanco has an under 2-7 ERA. I think, I think it might be 2-4, 2-5 uh, around there. Like, Renel Blanco has been good, man. He has been good. He's been one of the Astros' best players overall this season. And he's a good starting pitcher, man, whether you like him or not. Oh, I, I, I would hate Renel Blanco now because of this uh, incident with foreign substances. When Max Scherzer, people forget, like, two years ago, 2022, the beginning of that season, he got kicked out for foreign substances, like, they're not intentionally, I think, trying to like get their hands super sticky, but they're using rosin. They're using maybe water or soap or anything to clean their hands off, and it's making their hand a little bit too sticky. But I don't think it's also the reason that Renel Blanco is having all this sudden, this sudden success that, uh, in the middle of his career when he really wasn't doing much beforehand. So Renel Blanco, I really enjoy him, and all three of those guys been really big parts of their team so far this season. My NL starting pitchers consist of Matt Waldron, the only knuckleballer left in baseball, and he's a stud, man. He's a real stud. If he could get his secondary pitches um, and, and and better along with his knuckleball, dude, Matt Walsh is a stud. I really like him, and I think he's going to be a good player, man. I really enjoy watching his starts. Uh, Javier Assad, we just talked about him. Javier Assad is a dog. Just a great pitcher, an old-school pitcher, um, an, an exciting pitcher, sinker. Uh, it's got in incredible movement, a cutter, uh, a changeup. Like, I love Javier Assad a lot, and he's got great stuff. Jake Irvin on the Washington Nationals, man. He's a three ERA, and he's pitched this entire season. Jake Irvin's been really consistently great so far for a Washington, a team that's in the NL wild card hunt. I like Jake Irvin. He's been underrated uh, for the Nats this season. My relief pitchers consist of Craig Kimbrell, Luke Weaver, and David Robertson. Some veteran guys, and then Luke Weaver, a long inning guy for the Yankees. His stuff has been really improved so far this season. Craig Kimbrell has, uh, he got up to a terrible start with Baltimore, but ever since then, he has a 2-3 ERA. I think he has 16 saves. He's been very locked down so far for Baltimore. Uh, David Robertson has multiple moments. He struck out Otani, Betts, Freeman, back to back to back to back. Like, uh, David Robertson's been really good so far for Texas in their bullpen with uh, him and Kirby Yates back end. They've been really great. Uh, for the NL side, I have Eric Miller, on the San Francisco Giants, love me some Eric Miller. Love me some Eric Miller. The overall Giants bullpen, they've got a lot of guys that I really like. Um, Matt Strom, Matt Strom had, on the Phillies. He's been great so far. Really, really great so far. I think he has an under one year rate. He's been one of the best relievers in baseball. Really great stuff. Uh, and then we have Trevor McGill on the Milwaukee Brewers. Trevor McGill has got some of the best stuff in baseball. He's been their closer this season. He's got 99 in the tank. Um, and he's just a really intense, hard-throwing dog closer. Um, and he's been one of the better closes in baseball in 2024. So that concludes my 2024 Jared All-Star ballot. I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to potentially, maybe I'll do like a TikTok or like a tweet about it, of my actual real All-Star ballot of like Vladdy, not Vlad. I don't even know. I don't know why I said Vladdy, but Freddie Freeman, Otani, Marcelo Zuna, Aaron Judge, all the guys that should be in the All-Star game. But uh, let me know in the comments, what did you think of my All-Star ballot? Appreciate you guys. And let's move on to, before we get to the weekly pick I'm actually, I want to do some random things. It, it's not really an official segment, but something that I just want to like talk about and, and and I was just thinking about last night is the satisfaction of watching and, and, and just looking at baseball box scores. When I was watching baseball yesterday, it was just such a, a calming feeling. We're now getting into the real summer months of baseball, and it's just such an enjoyable feeling, man. It really is. It's, there's nothing like it. It's really... Like, like when I, when I was younger, baseball, like looking at the New York post, looking at those box scores of every single team and knowing every single team's, um, every single team's entire line of knowing their entire average, their entire stats. It's just, it, I, I don't know what it is about baseball that you, it, it's just doesn't happen with basketball and football and, and the NHL, any other sports that a lot of people enjoy, but the, the, the satisfaction of baseball every single day, grinding, and and just watching baseball as well it's exciting it, it, it's you can really think about everything and it's on all the time i love it love it so much and i'm just i just it, it just makes 
it just makes I, I, I'm, I'm this is like getting deep but like this makes it just makes life better in my opinion at least for me it really does so shout out to baseball the MLB it, it's so enjoyable and I love watching it on a nightly basis and speaking of matchups on a nightly basis weekly pick them we've got some great matchups tonight that I'm excited to watch we have three weekly pick them games this season we are 11 and 12 on the season so far we're we're struggling the weekly pick them intro It's hard, man. It's hard. It's it's such a great it's such a great transition. I don't think you could argue there's a better transition on YouTube on any other show ever. It's just I, I I'm so happy that I was able to find that. Da -na, da -na, na 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 It's just like such an exciting like yeah. This is weekly pick and time right here. So tonight we have the Orioles and the Yankees. We have the Mariners and the Guardians. That's a great matchup. Excited to watch that one. And the San Francisco Giants and the Cubs playing the second game of their set. And the Orioles and the Yankees won. We have uh, Albert Suarez, a 34-year-old who's been good so far for Baltimore, uh, versus Nestor Cortez. I was actually just watching Foul Territory before I hopped on. Um, and and the, the Baltimore Orioles, they were looking at the pitching probables for this series, Orioles and Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Super excited to uh, watch this series. But uh, the Yankees have Cortez, they have Heal, and they have Garrett Cole pitching on Wednesday. So Yankees are loaded and set up to win this series with all their top dogs. But then the Orioles have Cole Irvin, who's been good this season. But um, they have Albert Suarez, and then they have a, a guy that I don't even know. I've never seen him before, but he hasn't made a lot of starts. Corbin Burns is missing his start in this one. I don't think it's due to injury. It's just due to, like, um, rest throughout the entire season, which is understandable. But the Orioles not pitching their top guys. John Means injured. Um, I think, yes, Kyle Bradish is injured. Um, what's his injury? 15-day IL. Um a slight tear in the UCL. No, this is just an elbow injury, and the severity is unknown. That's not good, actually. It's not, I, I don't know, I'm sorry, I said slight tear in the UCL. That was last year. That was last year. He was playing through that, but um, also Tyler Wells. I forgot about Tyler. Tyler Wells, like, two years ago. He, he showed potential, but yeah, a lot of injuries for Baltimore in the rotation so far. They definitely need to make a move at the deadline, but um, Albert Suarez and Nesco Cortez, I'm taking the New York Yankees to win this game in Yankee Stadium. I should be, again, be an exciting affair. I love when these two teams go at it, even though the pitching matchup is not the best. Albert Suarez has actually been pretty solid for Baltimore. I think he's got a one nine one year, right? He's going five innings of one run ball every single time. He's one of those guys, three strikeouts. Uh, so he should give the, the aura somewhat of a quality start, keep them in the game uh, versus the Yankees. We have the Seattle Mariners and the Cleveland Guardians. We have Bryce Miller, Tristan McKenzie. Come on, man. Come on now, dog. It's going to be a pitching matchup. It's going to be two to one this game. Guaranteed two to one again, uh, two to one in this game. I feel this game is going to go to extras. I, I just got a feeling I'm taking the Seattle Mariners to win this game. Bryce Miller is going to dominate. He's going to go seven innings. I would say eight strikeouts, three hits, no runs. Guaranteed. Maybe one walk. He's going to be dominant. He's going to be Bryce Miller on his game and cooking the Cleveland Guardians lineup. But I think J Ram might be out. I, I checked two days ago. J Ram, I was looking at the Guardians box score. He, he didn't play J Ram. So I don't know if J Ram. Uh, activated from maternity list 13 minutes ago. So J Ram's back, but um, that that's big for Cleveland because J Ram's their their main their main guy. I mean, it's him, Stephen Kwan, dude. If they didn't have Stephen Kwan and Jose Ramirez, similar to the Kansas City Royals without Bobby Wood Jr. and Salvador Perez, like seriously, a team that's been so good this season, they're almost 20 games over 500. What would the Guardians be without those two guys? Like like seriously, I mean, they didn't have Stephen Kwan for a lot of their season, but outside of those two guys, like Josh Naylor, he's been good. He's been, he's been good, but Jimenez has been okay. Tyler Freeman, Will Brennan, all these guys, Bo Naylor, um, they're, they're not good. David Fry has been actually pretty good, but dude, they're, they're, their lineup has nothing, really. Jose Ramirez and Steven Kwan are the, the, the fuels that, that run this lineup, and without them, uh, this lineup would be so much worse. But great matchup, excited to watch that game. That one's in Cleveland, and then the third and final game, we have the San Francisco Giants and the Chicago Cubs. I'm taking the Giants to win this game. Logan Webb and Justin Steele in this game. Great pitching match. Two ones, two aces. Actually, is Imanaga the Chicago Cubs best pitcher? I don't know. I, I would uh, – no, Iman, Imanaga this year, uh, of course, has been their best pitcher. And Imanaga, I love Imanaga as much as anyone else. Everyone loves Imanaga, but I really love Imanaga. Um, but Justin Steele, Justin Steele, I think, is getting a little bit under – not, 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 I don't think anyone's criticizing him too much, but I don't think it's too crazy to say Justin Steele is still the better pitcher on that team as a whole than Shota Imanaga. And again, I love Imanaga. You could argue both of them, but Justin Steele still, 
almost won the Cy Young last season. Justin Steele is a real stud. He's got such a great fastball cutter uh, that really hitters just can't, can't pick up. Two guys with uh, lower end velocities, but they've got such great stuff still. Um, and really just fastball heavy, but I'm taking the Giants. Logan Webb has been a, 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 just a classic Logan Webb season. He's already at 90 plus innings so far. He's going to go 200 innings again of just dominant, consistent, great quality starts. And I'm taking the Giants to win this game, the second game of this set. So appreciate you guys so much for making it this far into the video. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you guys click that subscribe button, leave a like. We have a lot of big uh, plans coming up for this summer. I love doing this. This is really what I want to do for Hopefully, um, the red, this this really doesn't even feel like a job. This just it, it's such a great lifestyle to make these videos. And now without school, um, I, I'm really going to be committing over this summer to uh, continue to make content. So I'm super excited. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys soon, and have a great day.